Shalom, Israel. Most high in Christ blessed. I'm Captain Noah. I'm Officer Abnaya. And this is 15 Minutes with the Captain. Today's topic, the way to eternal life. The way to eternal life. And I'd like to preference today's class with the question, would you like to live forever? And that answer should be yes. If your answer is yes, then you understand that there's some things that must happen or must take place before you can enter into that eternal life. We're going to start this class out in the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6, and we're going to help you understand that way to eternal life. Read what you got. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Come on. Jesus saith unto him. So this is Christ saying, read, I am the way, uh -huh. the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Right. So the only way that you're going to receive this eternal life is through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Read that one more time. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. So Christ said that I am the way. Uh, hold that. Go to Exodus chapter 18, verse 20. Let's find out of something about this way. The book of Exodus chapter 18 and verse 20. Come on. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. Come on. And shalt show them the way. Show them the what? The way. Uh-huh. Wherein they must walk and the work that they must do. So like the like we said, there's a way to eternal life and there's a way that you must walk and there's work that you must do to gain this eternal life. Let's go back to John chapter 14 verse 6. Read one more time. John chapter 14 and verse 6. Come on. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. All right. So let's find out what that truth is. Let's go to the book of uh, Psalms. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 142. Bring it out. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law, and thy what? And thy law, come on, is truth. So God's laws are truth. Go back to John chapter 14 and verse 6. John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. So now we know that the way is work that you must do. Come on. The truth. The truth is God's laws. And the life. So we're still seeking out that eternal life. So now we're going to preface this. We're going to go to the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. Because the same question was asked by a young man that had great possessions. And he, had, he received a response from Christ as well. Let's find out if that response is just going to be that all you have to do is believe or if there are some things that you have to do. Read. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. Come on. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do? Must I what? What good things shall I do uh -huh. that I may have eternal life? So that's the question. What good thing must I do or what good thing shall I do that I may receive eternal life? And that is the topic of today's class, receiving that eternal life. So if you believe that eternal life exists, is that enough to get you into the kingdom? You have the Christian church that says all you have to do is believe on Christ, that he died and he rose from the dead and just tell him to come into your heart and you're going to be saved. They're saying that that's all you have to do to receive those keys to the kingdom or the keys to eternal life. Is that is that enough? Let's find out. Let's go to the book of James chapter 2 and start at verse 14. The book of James chapter 2 and verse 14. Come on. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith? So if you want to say that you believe in eternal life, what is the profit if you only say that you believe? Read and have not works so that's the key if you say you believe and you don't have works what is that going to profit you read on can faith save him is that going to be enough to get you into eternal life read verse 17 even so faith if it hath not works is dead so there's your answer faith without works faith in receiving eternal life without the necessary works or the necessary application is dead so you can have all the faith in the world your pastor can sell you a million hoop dreams and not teach you one commandment 
And when that day comes, you will not receive eternal life. All right, let's move along. So let's find out exactly what we should be doing to receive in order to receive that eternal life. We want to go to the book of Proverbs chapter two, starting at verse one. The book of Proverbs chapter two and verse one. If thou wilt receive my word. So it says, my son. So the Lord is treating us like children. He said, my son, if thy wilt receive. So that word wilt is an old English word that means if you will. If you will receive my word. So that's a choice that has to be made. You already, when you come into the doors and you decide that you want to uh, be that person that God created you to be, you have to make a decision, a choice. Read on. And hide my commandments with thee. Come on. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. Right. And apply thine heart to understanding. Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. All right, so we're going to go through this one more time. Let's read it from the top. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. My son. If thou wilt receive my word. So you're willing to receive God's word. And like we said, this is the beginning, the beginning of eternal life. So what are those words that we have to be willing to receive? What good are those words that we are coming to the truth and to the knowledge to receive? What are they? Watch this. Read that. The book of John. The book of John, chapter 6 and verse 63. Come on. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profit of nothing. Mm -hmm. The words that I speak unto you. The what? The words that I speak unto you. What are these words that we ought to, ought to be willing to receive? What are they? They are spirit uh -huh. and they are life. They are life. The words, the words that the Bible says be willing to receive. That's the way to eternal life. All right. Is there more on that? That was it. All right. So let's go back to Proverbs chapter two. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words Come on. and hide my commandments with thee. So it says, hide thy commandments with thee. You're going to have to reprogram your mind on God's laws. That's how you hide the commandments with thee. You start to reform your mind from Babylon's system. Read on. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom. So inclining your ear unto wisdom. Now you have a mindset towards wisdom. You're not going to be carried away by foolish things anymore. You're going to be, you're going to make that choice to keep God's laws. Read on. And apply thine heart to understanding. Mm -hmm. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding. Read on. If thou seekest for her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure. So we find out that eternal life is going to be hard work, hard work, hard work, right? It says you're going to have to seek for her as for silver and search and search and search for her as for hidden treasures. Now, anything worth having like rubies, diamonds, gold, you're going to have to dig. You're going to have to put in that work. You're going to have to do things to receive it. It's something that's deep in the earth. If you want it, if you really want it, you're going to get it. All right. Read on. Verse five. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. It says what? Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. And what are you going to find? And find the knowledge of God. So it says after applying all of these things, then and only then are you going to find the knowledge of God. Let's go to Psalms 111 and verse 10. The book of Psalms chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So everything that we read in Proverbs, you being willing to receive the words, you programming your mind and having a mindset that helps you apply these laws. Read that again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of wisdom. Read. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So why does the scripture say a good understanding have all they that do? This is actually a cut. A good understanding have all they that do. Let's go to Job chapter 28, verse 28. Watch this. Again, the scripture starts out by saying, if thy wilt, if you can make up your mind that you're going to receive this life. 
But you do have a choice. Read Job chapter 28 and verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. So fearing the Lord is wisdom. You should be you should be afraid of the Lord. You can't hide from him. Like they say, your arms are too short to box with God. And to depart from evil is understanding. So departing from that evil, departing from the ways of the world, departing from those things that you thought were proper. That's what does it say? And to depart from evil is understanding. So departing from evil, that's the understanding. So let's go back to uh, what do we want? Proverbs chapter 2 uh, and verse 5. The book of Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. All right. So this is how we're going to understand the fear of the Lord and find that knowledge of God. So let's go back to John chapter 14 and verse 6. Watch this. We're still talking about the way to eternal life. We're going to make sure that we're on the right path. Read the book of John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So the only way to receive that eternal life is through Christ. Is that all on that? Yes, sir. All right. So let's go move on to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20. Watch this. The book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. Come on. This is the true God and eternal life. So who is that true God and eternal life? We're speaking about Christ. We're speaking of Christ. Read it one more time. First John chapter 5 and verse 20. And we know that the Son of God is come. So it says, and we know that the Son of God is come. How do we know that the Son of God is come? Give me that in 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. Watch this. The book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3. Come on. And hereby we do know that we know him. So this is how you know that the Son of God has come. Watch this. Read. If we keep his commandments. If we do the necessary things. If we keep God's commandments. No osmosis. Nothing is going to fall in your lap. You're going to have to will yourself to receive these words, apply them, and do them. Read it one more time. First John chapter 2 and verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he that saith, I know him, mm -hmm. and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. Right. Is a liar. Now let's go on to the book of John chapter 4 and verse 10. You want the rest of that? Yeah, read the rest. And the truth is not in him. All right. And there's no truth in you if you don't keep God's laws. All right. You ready? Let's move on to John chapter four and uh, verse 10. The book of John chapter four and verse 10. Come on. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink. So this is Christ at the well and he's speaking to the Samaritan woman. And he asked her for a drink of water. Read it again. Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knowest the gift of God. So how do we know the gift of God? And what is that gift of God? Watch this. Read on. And who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink. Mm -hmm. Thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. Living what? Living water. It says, if you knew the gift of God, so we want to explain the gift of God. Let's go to Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Come on. For the wages of sin is death. So again, you have a choice. You can either choose life or you can choose death. But the wages of sin is what? For the wages of sin is death. Read on. But the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is what? But the gift of God is eternal life All through right. Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you have to know who Christ is. And it says that the gift of Christ is eternal, eternal life. So keeping God's laws is going to give you eternal life. Let's go to the book of, um, let's go back to Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. The book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do 
that I may have eternal life. So likewise, everyone that's listening or in the sound of my voice, the question is, what good thing must you do to receive eternal life? Let's find out. Verse 17, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Come on. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So the key to eternal life is keeping God's commandments. One more scripture. Let's go to Revelation 14 and 12. The book of Revelations, chapter 14 and verse 12. Come on. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. Here are they that what? That keep the commandments of God. And what else? And the faith of Jesus. Right. So in order to receive eternal life, you want to keep the commandments of God and keep the faith in Jesus the Christ. I'm Captain Noah. I'm Officer Abnaya. And this has been 15 Minutes with the Captain. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how we're men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth